rhombencephalon clear hind brain is also called rhombencephalon it consists of pons veroli medulla oblongata and cerebellum so you have pons veroli medulla oblongata and cerebellum are the three parts of hind brain please write down excuse me ma'am the diagram was the last part of mid brain yes yes after that i hope you all have written about the mid brain the notes is written after that you drew right the diagram next we are writing about the hind brain done can we move next next under this first we'll discuss about the pons veroli you have drawn the diagram right this diagram is done have you drawn this diagram okay one should speak ma'am the This diagram have you drawn hindbrain part, pons, medulla oblongata? Yes. Now, pons veroli. What does a pons veroli do? It connects the cerebellum, that is a hindbrain, to cerebrum, that is a forebrain. What is pons veroli doing there? It connects cerebellum to cerebrum. Pneumotactic center is present in. Where have you studied the pneumotactic center? Come on, tell me. In which chapter? In which chapter have you studied? Hmm. Quick breathing. Very nice, Madhura. In breathing, remember. Breathing. Okay. Next. Which is moderate the function of rhythmic center present in the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is a conical shape. It is continued into spinal cord. Right. Medulla oblongata is a conical shape continued into spinal cord. Right until the. After that, I tell you what to write. Right until the medulla oblongata.
Done? Okay, next. Can write down it's a conical shape. Where is this medulla oblongata present? It is present be between the pons and spinal cord. It is a center for respiratory, <coughs> cardiac, vasomotor, peristasis, digestive juice secretion, salivation, coughing, sneezing, defecation, urination, vomiting, yawning center. This is a center for all these functions. So whenever they say, a person died because he got hit on the head. The reason is he got hit on the medulla oblongata, the back side of the brain. That's the reason you always say when you fall on your head, you always need to secure your head. The reason is that the medulla oblongata should not get damaged. If it's get damaged, respiratory cardiac center are present and that stop if it's damaged, that stop working. And all other, just as vasomotor, peristasis movement, digestive juice secretion, salivation, coughing, sneezing, defecation, you know, urination, vomiting, yawning center, all these are centers that are present in the medulla oblongata. Please write down. Ma'am, yes. what is peristasis? Peristasis, the moment of esophagus, the moment of digestive system, slow movement of muscles, that is called peristasis movement. Vasomotor for the moment, okay. Vasomotor for the moment of the muscles and everything. The center is also important.
Okay, done. Let's move to the next. Next. Now, what do you? Okay, next is cerebellum. Cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. It has two large cerebral hemisphere. These two are connected by one small vermis. If you remember, if you have drawn yesterday, this is the vermis, and here it is cerebral hemisphere. These two are cerebral hemisphere, and the center one is vermis, right? It is. It has an arbor vitae, which is a tree of life. What does this arbor vitae does? It maintains the body posture and the balance of the body. This we studied. We have you already have drawn this diagram in the last class of the hind brain, which consists of cerebellum, which is the second largest part of the brain. Which is the first largest part of the brain? Who will tell me? Which is the first largest part of the brain? For brain, cerebral hemisphere. Very nice. Cerebral hemisphere is a first part. Very good. Is a first part, right? Is the largest part. And cerebellum is the second largest part. And this is connected by a small vermis, right? Arbora vitae is a kind of a. Here, what happened? The white matter is arranged in the form of tree. If you look into the diagram, the white matter is arranged in the form of tree. This is a white matter, where This is the gray matter. This structure maintains the body posture and the balance of the posture. So, if you have seen the alcoholic person, the body but they are not able to maintain the body balance. Neither they walk like you know the the movement of the walk. The balance of the body is not maintained. So, the alcohol affect which part of the brain so that they do not maintain the body posture. This is a question, okay? So, which part of the brain is affected in an alcoholic person? Pons, pyrrole, medulla oblongata, cerebellum, cerebral hemisphere, any part of midbrain? It is cerebellum. Clear to one and all? Very good. So, please write down this. Are you all understanding? Excuse that? me, ma'am. Yes, tell me. Ma'am, the two hemispheres are connected by small vermes. Yeah, small vermis. You then check. what about corpus callosum? Baba, this is cerebellum. This is a part of hind brain. Hind brain. Cerebral, uh, cerebral hemisphere. That is different. Which is we're talking about the part of forebrain. Oh, sorry, mom. Man, I just got confused. Got it now. Did you got the point? Yes, ma'am. Not yes, get confused. We are talking about these. All are the part of hind brain.
And then? Okay, next. So, what is a brain stem? Brain stem, many times a question is asked, what do you understand by brain stem? Brain stem is not only a hind brain, but it's a part of midbrain. Very important question. Midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. It's, there is no cerebral hemisphere, cerebellar hemisphere. It is midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata together forms a brain stem. You should remember this. Important point. Then, next. So this is all about the forebrain, midbrain, and pons, uh, uh, hindbrain. Forebrain, you have frozen cephalon, midbrain, mesencephalon, and hindbrain, rhombencephalon. And the division of the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain with all the parts has been done. Any confusion, I'll give you one minute to revise quickly before we move to spinal cord. Done? Any difficulties? Done? Any doubts? Okay, revise quickly. 
no ma'am and what no doubts or you have revised or not yet you revise what do you mean by no ma'am i'm just show the last slide last slide still i am on the last slide brain stem no doubts is everything clear to all each and everybody in the class how many of them all the 51 is it clear okay next we are moving to the spinal cord spinal see we discuss about the brain now there's something extra in the spinal cord which meninges is extra in the spinal cord how many meninges in the spinal cord when we compare with the brain two meninges in brain in the brain how many meninges are present in the brain four in what ash very good amal three in three in what three in what three meninges in what in brain or spinal cord please mention it properly very good amo three in brain and in medulla oblongata how much in medulla oblongata uh, sorry in uh, spinal cord it is four very good sanjana so you have one extra meninges in spinal cord the length of the spine the brain okay now the brain is this for example if this is a brain this brain continues further into spinal cord so we need to we have studied about the brain now we will be studying about the spinal cord <coughs> spinal cord the length is 45 cm the weight is 35 grams located inside the neural canal between the vertebrae for example if this is a spinal cord there is a vertebrae there is a vertebral column here there is a vertebral column on either side which is made up of vertebrae if you remember now here there is a canal the arrangement of this leads to formation of canal this is called neural canal in the neural canal there is a spinal cord are you getting the point this is the spinal cord so it says and how does it arises it arises from the foramen of magnum what do you understand by the foramen of magnum in the skull see brain is protected with what brain is protected with cranium or skull bones right by the skull and now spinal cord needs to come out there is a foramen here through which the spinal cord come out this 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 uh, foramen is called foramen of magnum Ma'am, can you explain again about the foramen of magnum? I can see. I love see. Skull. This is a skull. Okay, the blue color is skull, and the brain is the red one, which is protected inside. This is the brain, right? Now, brain continues into spinal cord. The brain need to come out of the skull. It come out through the hole. That hole is called foramen of magnum, through which the spinal cord arises into the vertebral column. Got the point? and this spinal cord extend from c1 to l1 c1 is cervical vertebra see vertebrae are made up of cervical thoracic and lumbar so first you have cervical then thoracic then lumbar cervical 7 thoracic 12 and lumbar 5 but the extension of this spinal cord is from c1 to l1 so all the 12 thoracic vertebra see all the cervical vertebra and one lumbar vertebra until then the spinal cord extend okay ma'am got it next you write down this 
then i'll explain you about conus medullaris phylum terminale and corda equina everything so please write down this first you write down and then i'll explain Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, that point made up of only pi matter is for spinal cord, no? No, only made up of final terminale. I'll tell you. You write down and explain. This is under this uh, spinal cord has conus medullaris, phylum terminale, and corda equina has a part. Okay, there are three parts in this. Conus medullaris is the posterior neural end of the spinal cord. It's a posterior part of the neural cord. For example, if now this is a spinal cord, okay, this end is called conus medullaris, okay, medullaris. Now this medullaris continues till into spinal cord. This region is called phylum terminale. This phylum terminale is only made up of pia matter because rest all spinal cord is made up of four meninges. Among this, only phylum terminale has only pia matter. Then corda equina, it, this pia matter has a tail called corda equina. We'll, I'll discuss about this. You just write down. I'll repeat one, one more time. This part is under phylum terminale.
done are you all done writing now please draw this can you see the diagram of spinal cord cervical bulge lumbar bulge corners medullaris phylum terminale corda equina can you see this quick sanjana padma can you see this clearly rishikesh okay so draw this quickly done yes ma'am okay listen to me okay now so c1 to c1 c1 to how many c7 and then uh, t1 t2 to t12 after that l1 okay until that the spinal cord extend that the posterior part is called conus medullaris that is a cone shape then it continues into phylum terminale which is made up of only one that is called pia mater the length of this phylum ter terminale is 20 cm it has tail like structures corda corda means tail horse equa means horse this structure looks like a horse tail so it is called as corda equina this pia mater or the phylum terminale helps to give a support ventral support this is all points you have written please read this corda equina a tail like collection of roots of spinal nerve at the posterior end phylum terminale is a spinal cord extension that is made up of pia mater which produce provides a vertical support is this point clear to all now right down about the spinal cord spinal cord has a central canal called neurocil we will take a cross section will uh, it has a central canal co called neurocil it is filled with csf okay csf you know it is it is a cerebrospinal fluid now tell me which part of the brain does csf is formed come on quickly which part of brain is csf formed
very good medal oblong at time diencephalon right so this forms the uh, this one a uh, csf is formed but how is a csf formed in all the ventricles or all the parts of the brain and spinal cord cord how it is formed in the all the parts of spinal cord and this brain by the help of which cells padma i asked choroid plexus amoth choroid plexus is where you get very good yes choroid plexus is where the csf is formed but my question is how is this csf is formed only in the two region medulla oblongata and diencephalon but you find csf all over the brain and the spinal cord because of the ciliated ependymal cell is this point clear ma'am can you please repeat see i said csf is formed where <coughs> medulla oblongata and diencephalon formed because choroid plexus are present in medulla oblongata and diencephalon but csf after it is formed it is present in all over the brain and spinal cord how it is possible it is possible because of the presence of ciliated ependymal cell is this point clear understood ma'am thank you you are welcome done with the writing <coughs> Done. 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 Please take uh, draw this transverse section of spinal cord. When you take the cross section of the spinal cord, if the spinal cord is like this, when you take a cross section of the spinal cord like this, the diagram appears to be this. There's a dorsal fissure which is a shallow, shallow, whereas there is a ventral fissure which is very deep. Then There is a dorsal funiculus, two lateral funiculus, ventral funiculus. In the middle, there is a canal, and that is lined by ependymal cell.
Done? Man, it's lateral funiculus on both the sides, right? Yeah, yeah, lateral cuniculus on both the sides. If you remember, brain is having a gray matter outside or inside. Tell me. Brain having a gray matter outside or inside. Sorry. Then outside. So the gray is outside and inside is white. But in the spinal cord, it is out. It is opposite. So gray is inside. You can see this is a gray matter which is arranged. This is a gray matter which is arranged in a form of H shape. Can you see? This part is called dorsal horn. These two parts are called dorsal horn. And this part is called ventral horn, which is also gray. The gray matter is arranged in the form of H shape. Is this point clear to all? Did you understood? Yes, clear everyone. Any doubts? Any doubts? Is everything clear? Okay, fine. Yeah, next. Next, this is all about the spinal cord. Let's move to the next, that is a peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system or PNS. We are studying about the, we are done with the spinal cord. We are discussing now, we are done with the brain, we are done with the spinal cord. Next, we are moving with the peripheral nervous system. All the nerves arising from the brain and the spinal cord are included in PNS. All the nerves arising from the brain and the spinal cord are included in PNS. Nerves arising from the brain are called cranial nerves. Nerves arising from the cord is called spinal nerves. Okay. We'll be discussing about the nerves, which is peripheral nervous system. It includes a cranial nerve. It includes a spinal nerve. Nerves arising from the brain are called cranial nerves. The nerve arising from the spinal cord are called spinal nerve. So they are sensory nerve, motor nerve, mixed nerve. Sensory nerve is from um, sense organ, S0 is sense organ. It's from sense organ to CNS, okay? The impulses carried from sense organ to CNS is sensory nerve. From the sense organ, from the CNS to the action, that is towards the, that impulse is carried by motor nerve. For example, if you touch a hot plate or something that is it's going, the sense is going from sensory organ to the CNS and whether to remove the hand or not, that is coming from, that is coming from, uh, whether to, it's coming from the CNS to the sensory organ, that is a motor nerve, which is carrying that information. Mixed nerve contain both sensory and motor nerves. So these are all the different types of nerve. So we'll be studying here cranial nerves and the spinal nerve both. Please write down this slide. Ma'am, could you please remove the uh, the toolbar above? Ma'am, please scroll. Can you see it now? Ma'am, close the control center. I have closed. Now? <coughs> Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay, please write that.
Dan? Next. Now, when we discuss about the spinal nerves, first we'll discuss about the spinal nerve. Under the, under the periphery nervous system, we'll be discussing spinal nerve and the cranial nerves. Spinal nerves, you know from spinal cord, cranial nerves from the brain. So, let us discuss about the spinal nerves. Arises from the spinal cord to intervertebral foramen. What do you understand by intervertebral foramen? This is the spinal cord, right? Spinal cord which is coming from the brain. Now, this, where is it present? This is present in the, between the vertebra. This vertebra and this vertebra, there are many vertebras like this. So, intervertebral foramen means this spinal nerve coming from through this foramen. Are you understanding? This is called intervertebral foramen. Are you understanding? How many pairs of spinal, uh, spinal nerves are coming? Around 31 pair together. So, one, two, so at most 31 pair of spinal nerves pairs because it's coming from both the sides. And they all are mixed. Very important question. These all are important questions. Okay. These spinal nerves have two roots. One is a dorsal root. Other is a ventral root. We'll discuss about the dorsal root and the ventral root. The dorsal root contains sensory nerve fibers and the ventral root contains motor nerve fibers. You have both the points. Dorsal root, ventral root. Dorsal root contains sensory and the ventral root contains motor. Clear? Please write down.
dan yes ya yeah. oke okay. now listen i hope each and every point what you're writing you're understanding it well can you see this is a intervertebral foramen it's not 6 7 8 it is 8 okay it is 7 okay so the region between 1 and 1 this is the intervertebral foramen from where the spinal cord arises so how many pairs 31 pairs all are mixed okay mixed nerves now dorsal ramus before we went we, before we discuss about this further please write down this draw this structure last time in the last diagram we have drawn until the dorsal horn and this is your ventral horn right the dorsal horn continues into dorsal root ventral horn continues into ventral root and you have written the dorsal root contains sensory fibers and the ventral root contains motor fibers you have already done okay then they come out through intervertebral foramen if here there is a vertebra here one vertebra the other side there is one more vertebra so they come they come out through intervertebral foramen has a mix the dorsal root and the ventral root which is carrying sensory and motor will mix together and come out as a mixed fibers that is 31 pairs so draw this and explain you how it goes about quickly clear to each and one each and everyone shifa is it clear any doubts Ma'am, what is the full form of DRG? What? DR DR dorsal root ganglia.
Done. Is it done? Now listen. I'll write down here. Yeah. Just go to see the bottom root. I quite dorsal root cell bodies. Dorsal. Root, please meet your mics. Cell bodies present present in DRG that is dorsal root ganglion. Which type of cells are present? Pseudo unipolar neuron. Very important. Do you remember we studied pseudo unipolar neuron? Do you remember? There I mentioned pseudo unipolar neurons are present in the dorsal root of spinal cord. If you remember in which chapter we studied this? Which chapter did we study this? Ventral root. Structural organization. Very good. In the nervous tissue that is structural organization. Bodies are present in gray matter of spinal cord. Spinal nerves divides into three branch branches. Spinal nerves divides into three branches. After coming out, after coming out of intervertebral foramen, inter 
vertebral foramen. Cell bodies, cell bodies, you don't know? Neuron cell bodies, cell, uh, cyton, cyton are called cell bodies. Cyton is a gray matter. done any doubts to anybody there no so when this spine nerves come out come out of this uh, intervertebral foramen it divides into it divides into three roots one is dorsal ramus ventral ramus and ramus communicans dorsal ramus supply nerves to skin muscles on the dorsal side ventral ramus supply to muscles skin upper limb lower limb on the ventral side and ramus communicants supplies to autonomic nervous system clear any doubts Clear? Any doubts? So there is the spine, uh, spine nerves come out and divide into three roots called dorsal ramus, ventral ramus, and ramus communicants. Dorsal ramus to the dorsal side, ventral ramus to the ventral side, and ramus communicants is to the autonomic nervous system. Any doubts? So if you look into the diagram, we can see that A is dorsal ramus, B is ventral ramus, and this is C is ramus communicans. So it is divided into all this root. Clear? Please write down quickly. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ma'am, which slide are you showing presently? Dorsal ramus, ventral ramus, clear? Any doubts to anyone there? Come on, quickly. Okay, next. Next, we'll be discussing about this all about the spine nerves. Next, we are going to cranial nerves. The nerves arising from where? The nerves coming from brain are called cranial nerves. So, in fishes, amphibians, important questions 10 phase of cranial nerves. Reptiles, apes, mammals, 12 phase of cranial nerves. They arise from the brain. So, they are said to be the cranial nerves. Any doubts to anybody there? Is all clear? Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Have you changed the slide? Can you see the cranial nerve slide? Now I can see, ma'am. Done. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, could you explain again the uh, ramus communicans part? Cranial nerve is done. Cranial nerve is done. Everybody. Have you written about the cranial nerves? Yes, yes. ma'am. Now listen. Yes, Communicants, this is the intervertebral foramen, okay, through which the, here from here, which nerves is coming? From here, you're getting motor nerve is coming. From here, there is a cranial, uh, sensory nerves. They all both comes through what foramen? Intervertebral foramen outside. When they come, they get mixed. This mixed nerves get divided into three roots. This mixed nerves get divided into three roots, both sensory and motor. A root is called dorsal ramus, which supply to the dorsal side. B is ventral ramus, which supply the nerves to the ventral side of the body. And C is the ramus communicans, which goes to the autonomic nervous system of the brain. Is it clear? Third one, that is a dorsal ramus, ventral ramus, and ramus communicans. If you look, ramus communicans supplies to the autonomic nervous system, ventral ramus to the ventral part, muscle, skin, limbs, and dorsal ramus to the dorsal side of skin and muscle. Clear? Any more doubts to anybody? Hmm? Come on, tell me. Any doubts? No. Okay. So this is all about the cranial system. Now, just a minute. Darwin, Darwin, Darwin. So on Tuesday, on Thursday, there's a class at around 5.45. Okay, with Darwin's on Thursday. I want you all to join on oh, Thursday for the class. Uh, our PSIP class? No, Darwin's class, that is on Thursday, 5.45. There is a class. I'll schedule a class in ESIP. 
you have you can uh, approach the teams uh, on darwin classes are you eligible to join for darwin classes yes right so i'll schedule a class in darwin class itself so please join darwin class on thursday 5:45 okay done okay thursday 5:45 i'll see you there okay any doubts maybe you will continue doubt? with this chapter only this part only will continue continuation of this part okay so tell me what type of neurons are present in dorsal root of ganglion what type of neurons are present here in dorsal root of ganglion come on Mm, yes, sensory dorsal root of ganglion. Ganglion, D R G. Everybody, yes, sensory. You all are saying sensory. I'm not talking about the dorsal root. I'm talking about the dorsal root of ganglion of spinal cord consists of what? Which type of neuron? If I say what does the dorsal root contains, the Rishikesh, very good. It's a pseudo unipolar neuron. If I say dorsal root contains sensory, ventral root contains sensory. You do not have ventral root of ganglion. The dorsal root of ganglion is present only on the dorsal root. Is this point clear to all? No confusion there. Gray matter is inside, white white matter is outside. We have studied. Any doubts to anyone? See, in the next class, I might start with question series for you before I move to the next topic. So I want you all to read this chapter. It's just a revision. So read this chapter. It doesn't take much time. Half an hour. Spend half an hour. Read this and come to the next class. Okay. The test portion for the ESIP Stella School. I have informed digestion, breathing, and circulation. Point is clear to one and all. Yes. So very soon we'll finish this chapter also, and then we are left with few more. Then we are done. Okay. So I hope I hope you all understood today's class without any doubts. If you still have doubts, you can get back to me by the way I said for the upcoming test for the Stella School Breathing, Digestion, and Blood Circulation. Can I wind up the class if there are no doubts? Bye bye everyone. Take care and keep learning. You're welcome. Bye bye.